Hey there, I'm Dr. Dave. Welcome to Microdose U. And today I've got um, on this show a doctor of psychology. Yes, a clinical psychologist. And she's going to be sharing with us the success she's had with her patients um, and herself also using magic mushrooms, microdosing psilocybin. So let's get right into it. <music> Okay, so welcome, and uh, today we have Dr. Denise Morritt. How are you, doctor? I'm well, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, two well, doctor, two doctors yeah. on the same show, but but you yes. are a the reason I'm having me. You are a doctor of psychology, so doctor that's of psychology. That's Correct. that's a that's a big thing. So tell tell us a little bit about what uh, just a little bit about your story, what you do. Yeah. So um, as you said, as you said, I'm a doctor of psychology. So I'm a clinical psychologist here in New York State. Um, and I've basically been in private practice. I did some public mental health, basically been in private practice for about 31 years at this point, licensed in New York, um, clinical practice, treating uh, the gamut, what you'd see, depression, anxiety, trauma, et cetera. Um, I also um, have, have taught throughout my career, most recently in the last five or six years at Vassar College. Um, I teach in their lifelong learning institute. I've taught like stress and happiness studies, but currently I'm teaching um, psychology and film, which is really interesting. I'm an author. I wrote a book, um, a sort of a self-help book for parents who are dealing with a very serious medical issue for their child. So it's for how the parent copes with the fact that their child has a, a life-threatening illness. So I wrote a book on that. Excellent. So, so that's some, basically my background. Yeah. It's great. At some point um, during this episode, make sure you, um, if you have that book handy somewhere, make sure you just hold it up so people will, if they're interested, they'll know, they'll know what it's that's called, it. know how to get it. So yeah, oh. yeah, it's called. Um, it, is that correct or is it um, backwards? Like I see it backwards. No, it's showing correct. Yeah. Okay. So you can see it's Lifeline, uh, a parent's guide to coping with a child's serious or life-threatening -thre medical issue. Um, which I went through with my child. Thankfully, he, he's okay. He survived. Um, so I uh, wrote down some stuff about it. And, and it was going to be a pamphlet, became a book. <laughs> I love that. Pamphlet to book. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Practical so, stuff, stuff I thought, um, why isn't there something written about this? You know, there's plenty for how, you, how to help your child cope, but there was nothing for parents. And so I was like, why isn't there... This is totally, it's the most traumatic thing I've experienced in my life. My son fighting for his life for three years was absolutely the most horrific thing a parent could experience. So I was like, there's gotta be something, some things written on this. And I was astounded how um, there wasn't. So I wrote the book I needed is what I tried to do from the experience. Beautiful. So um, maybe we yeah. can, Denise, maybe we can use this as a segue to because of course um, we're here to discuss um, magic mushrooms, psilocybin, right. um, for for things like depression and anxiety and a host of other host of, of other you know uh, issues. Um, so tell me from your experience then of what you've done be, being um, a doctor of psychology and maybe some of your life experiences. How did you get to this point where you are? Um, not only knowledgeable about psilocybin, but 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 a, a big proponent of it. And it, if I may say, if I and correct me if I'm wrong, a big proponent, but also um, you think it it could be like the best um, treatment modality out there for some of these things that we're talking about. Again, such as such as um, anxiety, depression, PTSD, or whatever. Trauma, yeah, particularly. So um, it's interesting. My profession actually comes from that. If you go way back in in history. Um, psychedelics were used routinely. And at some point they became illegal, unfortunately. And, um, you know, thought uh, right now, psilocybin's a schedule one uh, drug, meaning it, uh, according to the government, um, has no um, med medicinal value and is dangerous. And that's just not true. That is not true about psilocybin. It may be true for other substances, but not for mushrooms, not for psilocybin. There is absolutely no danger in using it. It's, and it's completely helpful. And the research is showing that, but we also know that out in the large, larger way. Um, so my work has always been about rewiring 
because you know we, we sort of are born and we're like we're kind of okay right but like sometimes in utero or right after there's immediately there's like a, a false imprint or um something laid down over us that constricts that damages that sets up a, an unnatural state and yet it feels like our natural state and so we start going literally in that pathway in our mindset in our being in our physiology the work I've done for you know 30 some odd years, and I continue to do this work, is I always say it's not talk therapy, therapy doesn't work. Which is funny, as a psychologist, people are like, what do you mean? You're doing therapy and it doesn't work. What I mean is traditional, go to a therapist, you know, sit there and talk, you know, go back week after week, and in 20 years, maybe you got some insight, some support, didn't really profoundly change anything. My way of working is really to try to get into the deeper being, the way the brain is organized um, and rewire it so it's better. So how I do that is through imagery, through dreams, powerful things like, okay, let's go visit your five-year-old that was traumatized and let's, let's bring him or her here or them, whatever your pronoun is. And, and, you know, like, let's talk, let's, let's say, you know, that crap that happened back there was really bad and it set this up and that's just not true. Um, and, and dream work, you know, uh, dreams are unbelievable because when we're dreaming, meaning asleep, dreaming, we are in a more open state. We have more access to that deeper part that eh, modern society doesn't really promote that so much. So that's when we're more open. The problem with just that therapy is we're not really going to um, reset things because we don't have constant access to that deeper state of being because we're working and we're busy and there's so much that keeps us up here. So the psilocybin comes in because it actually will physically rewire. It rewires our neurons. It rewires our DNA. It lengthens the, the ends of the DNA and the chromosomes. All well, this like science for a second, but it literally like aging stress shortens the ends of the DNA and it unravels like a, the end of a shoelace. It loses its little plastic thing and it unravels it and it decreases our ability to cope with life. And, and we see that in physical and emotional stress or discomfort. What psilocybin does is it targets that. We know that it increases serotonin, but it also helps decrease the acidic environment in the body, the oxidative stress and everything that leads to a sort of getting unraveled physically. Back pain, which I have, got better when I started using psilocybin plant medicine because it literally, it not people said, oh, well, you're so much more relaxed because now you're microdosing and you feel better. So of course you're relaxed, your back pain's better. That's not exactly what happens. I mean, it does a little bit, I should say. What happens is it's changing the inflammation in my back. It's literally rewiring and changing the ends of, you know, the, the, the pain receptors and the way things are organized. So it's changing brain structure. It's changing physical structure in my body. It's also changing my emotional state. So all of that together is life-changing. And as I have said to many people, we are in, there's, um, I mean, before we had the pandemic, the world changing situation, there was so much pain and I didn't feel like, you know, psychology and the mental health profession really addressed it adequately. Medication can be extremely helpful. We know it helps lots of people. Some people, that's the only thing that's going to help. I'm talking about pharmaceutical medications, antidepressants, et cetera. It doesn't really change though. It doesn't rewire anything. And as soon as you're off it, you're gonna bounce back. So you haven't really changed. And if you're doing that meds along with profound, deep inner work, like the dream work, the imagery work, changing your thinking patterns, that can, that can also sort of help. The psilocybin just makes that more effective and faster because it literally opens your access to that awareness, your consciousness, your true being, your original soul level way of being before conditioning or, you know, imprint from life, you know, sort of went on, on, on top of that and created this, you know, unhealthy wiring. So because thankfully I'm in a state in New York where there's a lot of legislation 
going on to, you know, there's a lot of research going on, NYU and, you know, Harvard and John Hopkins, and there's really good research going on. It's going to take probably a very long time for them to show what we already know. But I see how it just will help people so much better that even without the talk therapy or without some of the other strategies, as long as people are not just taking mushrooms and going, okay, now I don't have to do anything. You still have to do every, you know, lots of other things to support. So it, alongside, but it really is such a leading um, life-changing plant. And that's why I support it. Let's, let's go back a little bit because you've been practicing for some time now. Um, when yeah. you first started, like the earlier years of your, of your um, psychology practice, um, was, it, was it frustrating for you knowing that, um, you know, talk therapy is, um, is slow, it's not as effective as we'd like it to be? Uh, of course, there's pharmaceuticals out there that you, patients could be on, but was it, was it frustrating? Did you ever feel that, you know, there's, there's got to be something better because what I'm doing with my patients is just, it's either not working or taking way too long or, you know, not that effective. How, how was it back then before, before you started getting well, into the um, psilocybin? Yeah. So it was extremely frustrating. And I actually got myself in some trouble, like in training, believe it or not. I mean, nothing big, but like people would say, no, no, Denise, it can't be that way. Because I was taught, look, if someone's had trauma, for example, they have to realize that that is a life changing uh, defining event and that they have to consider the rest of their lives. I'm a victim of blank trauma. And right away I went, I, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that you're stuck a particular way and you have to define yourself by trauma. And that's actually setting that mindset and that um, the, the brain pathways to stay stuck. So I was always about, there's got to be another way. And I was told, no, there is not. This is the only way you're, you're resisting. People have to really accept what's happened to them. And, and, and yeah, there's a little bit of acknowledging, look, this stuff happened. I can't be in denial. But that was very different than what they were saying. And so I immediately um, was, you know, not in trouble, but I realized, you know, I, I, went, I was, I was going to go to medical school. I went into psychology because I thought there's way more comprehensive um, possibilities here to really help not only heal people, but to proactively prevent illness from occurring both in the body and in the being. Uh, so yeah, it was very frustrating early on. And I really did, I didn't know as much about psilocybin back in the 1990s as I do now, but I was very aware that that was professionally something. And there were lots of societies that were trying to move in that direction, but there was so much resistance because of the pharmaceutical industry. And everybody was being put on anti-anxiety medications and antidepressant medications. And then we had, oh, the SSRIs and that's magic. And everybody's so much better, except it wasn't. And I would often be working with people to try to help them find their way because they were, now they were depressed and side effects from medication. So I'd gradually go into um, other supplements and plants that could be healing. And I kept coming back to psilocybin because I knew we were a long way from you know, being able to use it, but I knew it had um, those healing uh, capacities and effects. And now I see it. I see it in you know, myself and people I know and patients. And I know lots of people that are in you know, areas where it is legal and access is, is and there's so much research now that shows, um, you know, how successful it really is. And particularly, you know, my expertise is in microdosing, um, and and that that is in, in itself showing um, very effective um, results. So yeah, so I'm glad where we are now. And frustrated for I would say of my 31 years licensed here in New York, I would say probably uh, 28 of them. <laughs> Frustrating, <laughs> yeah. But now oh. there's like all these societies, you know, there's New York State um, psychedelic, I, I'll get the, the letters wrong, but psilocybin action committees. And I just signed, I mean, you know, it's tomorrow's election day, but I had been signing all kinds of support and bills and everything. And, um, you know, it's, it's moving along. So how did you personally, uh, actually, I shouldn't assume, but um, so I should ask you this question this way. Um, did you personally get involved in, in um, using psilocybin for yourself 
um, before you started saying, oh, yeah, this is, this is so good, I'm going to start recommending it to my patients. How did, how did the whole thing start with you? My personal experience um, started, so I, I, I was, um, so when my son was sick, I, it was a very profound experience those three years and it changed, you know, my entire being. And I, um, you know, I sort of recovered, so to speak, but I noticed like um, a couple of years after, you know, when he would go to leave to drive, I was suddenly hit with like a lot of anxiety. Now he's going to get killed that way or something, you know, so, and, and, I wouldn't take medication if I didn't need to. I started, you know, like looking at other ways. Um, some people recommended, you know, cannabis is now legal here. I had a medical card and eh, it sort of helped. It was better. And I didn't want to just right away go on pharmaceuticals. I did a lot of inner work, a lot of meditation. Um, and then I start, you know, and I knew about psilocybin, frankly, I didn't want to do you know, a trip. I didn't want to do macro dosing. It, I was like, no, I don't know if I'm really want to experience that just yet. A lot of people get like a little nervous. They won't have control. I was like, I don't want to have a bad trip, all those experiencing experiences. So that's when I really got into the micro dosing because actually um, it was a friend of mine said, oh, you should micro dose. And I was like, what, what, what's that? And then I realized, you know, you have these conversations on a Saturday night, you know? So then I really started doing the research and that was about maybe about two years ago, I started that really looking at, and I'm following in New York, there's a lot of these like one-time macro dose studies that are proving how successful, and even in a year later and down at Sloan Kettering and uh, NYU, they have big study about, um, you know, people who are terminal and it just totally changing their whole perspective about dying, how they feel about it, what they believe and just being coming to terms with it a little bit better with one dose of psilocybin. Um, so I, you know, I, I just was doing that at the same time I was doing the microdose research. So it took about a year. And then I finally said, I, you know, I want to sort of see about this and, you know, you find your way to the right people and you get, you know, I found, you know, people, professionals and, you know, got to that place and, uh, did the research. And I said, well, now I'm gonna, now I'm going to start. So that was about four months ago. And I, I'm one of the fortunate ones, I would say that I instantly felt so much better. And I was not feeling horrible. I was doing fairly well. I wasn't depressed or anxious or feeling a lot of residual trauma, but when it would hit me, it was debilitating for, you know, a day or two. And it was just took, took my breath away. And I thought this, this is a real sign that there's some work to be done here. That is gone. That is really gone. In fact, the last week I've had some stuff come up and I've been like, wow, I'm really seeing how like it grabs a hold of me and then went, oh no, that's different now. And I literally could feel the thoughts and in my body. Um, and the relief of the back pain is just a bonus. I mean, I have pretty uncomfortable back. So. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fantastic. So um, yeah. were you on any type of uh, SSI, SSRI or any other type of medication when you started microdosing or you weren't on anything, you just started the microdosing with, without being on anything else? Correct. So I've never taken an SSRI. Um, I did take like for anxiety once because I had to have an MRI, like I took a, you know, Xanax, I, you know, I have a little bit of experience with that, but nothing regularly. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I did, did have, I mean, now I let it expire because we don't need that now in New York because recreational cannabis is legal. Um, but I had a medical card and I was eh, sort of doing a little bit uh, with that. So, but I had stopped that, you know, um, probably a good year and a half ago before I started microdosing. So, I, you know, I, t I take like some supplements. Um, I knew about the value of, you know, like lion's mane and chagra mushrooms and like healing the body. So that's very different um, than magic mushrooms. So I, you know, took some supplements. Sure. Um, well, I'll tell you, so one of the most commonly asked questions I get, and let's just spend a few minutes and address that. People always say, um, and, and I, I get it because people are, sometimes people are feeling really, really bad and down and anxious. So they say, how long does it take? How, how, I'm going to start microdosing, but how long is it going to take before I start feeling better? And you can answer for yourself. It sounds like you were pretty quick, but answer for right. yourself and then answer from your experience with um, maybe some patients as well. Yeah. So that is, 
a very common question, like you said, and it's a fantastic question. And we don't know. That's part of the problem because everybody's different. We know it works. We know it helps. We know we will feel better. Will it be right away? Will it take a year? We don't really know. Everybody is different. Um, so, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I'm fortunate. Um, I have some family, some friends, some patients. They've also experienced like pretty amazing immediate effects. And then I have some people that are, you know, I have a friend actually um, who's, she sort of initially in the beginning wasn't sure it was really helping and maybe was she feeling worse. And I said to her, you know, I, I would say, give it, give it a little bit of time, you know, sort of follow that, whatever protocol you're using, follow it for a little time and see how it goes before you start changing it. And one of the things that I ask people not to do, and, and I don't, I don't certainly don't own the corner of, you know, have the corner of the market of the expertise here, but I kind of know some stuff. And, and what I say is, don't just start changing everything around. People go, maybe now I should do double the dose or half the dose or four days in a row. Let me try it this way. And I, like, it's good to sort of just sort of go along and see how you do. Give it some time. It might be a month. It might be two months. It might be six months that people will start to actually, uh, they'll feel something usually. They just might not experience like a profound change the way that I certainly did in the first uh, month. I will say now, you know, I took a little break here and there, month four-ish going into five. Um, I don't have that profound experience the way because it, it's, all, I've also rewired a lot. So now it's like not as noticeable and it just keeps working and working and, you know, I'm going to go out, I'm going to stay with it for I don't know, maybe about a year or so and see where I'm at then. I mean, maybe as, as long as you need it, maybe. Because I, I, can, I can tell when I hit about, um, I guess about the 18-month 18, 18 point with, through my microdosing. Now, now I'll, I'll go back because, um, Denise, my mic, and I, I think I've talked to you about this before, my microdosing started working um, almost right away, even from the very first time I microdosed. Now, again, I, I tell people that might have been placebo. I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter if it was a placebo or right. not, but it did It did start working almost right away. I started feeling a lot better, and um, one of the meds I was on, I got, I was able to get off like immediately. Um, the other, the SSRI, the Lexapro, it took, uh, I, I waited about nine months before I weaned off of that. Uh, but then when I got to the 18-month point, I just felt like it's almost like that I'm fixed. I'm fixed. I, I took a one month mm -hmm. break. Um, I, I kind of microdose or take a little bit of a larger dose kind of as needed right these days. Right. Um, but again, getting back to um, very, a very common question. And, and Denise, in our, um, in our group, um, Microdose You on Facebook, um, we see people ask or we see people say, um, I started microdose. I've, first of all, I've got, I've got horrible depression or anxiety, whatever it might be. I started microdosing. I've been doing it for three weeks. I don't feel any change at all. And they get very frustrated. Now, are you right. saying that you tell your, you would tell your patient, okay, this, it, everybody's different. It takes time. Keep it going. Don't change anything. Keep it going. Is, is that what you would say? Generally. Yeah. I mean, you know, especially at the three week mark, if somebody's telling me at three months, well, I, you know, I, I don't notice a change. Maybe then they can start sort of, you know, I'm also going to ask, um, what else are they doing? You know, or, because a lot of times people will just, you know, our society is very much take a pill, let it work, you know. So with microdosing, that is true that the plant is going to do what it needs to do, but we have to work alongside it. So the very first time I microdosed, I was a little, I had that anxiety that lots of people have about like, I am putting something in my body that my body's unfamiliar with. What if something, you know, bizarre happens here, even though I didn't really believe that, but there was still, so I always, every day I get up and I always set, uh, even on a, you know, non-dose day, I do twice a week. So there's more non-dose days. I say, you know, I, I, I ground myself. I do my little inner meditation for a little bit. And I always say, I'll find my way, even if I don't believe it, even if I don't know how, I trust my past. So what I started to do was include the psilocybin in that because we know even when 
on our non-dose days, the psilocybin is still working. In fact, those non-dose days are key for that consolidation. So I still say, I'm, why am I using this plant medicine? Because I want to rewire my being and I believe it will heal anxiety, depression, trauma, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, so if somebody's doing that and it's like three weeks, I'll say, well, give it a little more time. Let's see where you're at, you know, in a month and a half from now or something. Let's see. And then take a week off and let's like, maybe we go up a little bit on the dose or down a little, depending on what their, you know, dose level is. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's sort of, it, it's a little for some people like blind faith, they have blind faith in that they have to trust something that maybe they're unsure about. And that isn't like coming from 10 different doctors, you know, out in the world. So, um, you know, I, let's just see how it goes. And, and I liked what you just said, Dave, about, um, you know, like 18 months and then sort of like stopping and feeling like you were fixed. And then now on occasion for maybe a variety of reasons, you'll do like a larger dose or you'll, you know, whatever. And, and we refer to that as sort of like intuitive. Your body, you know, your body knows you have a great relationship with the medicine. It has a great relationship with you and you're intuitively finding, you know, the way and what works for you and it's working. So, um, you know, that's, that's the pathway, but you know, in your example, three weeks in, yeah, that's not, um, yet long enough to make a decision about, about anything. So, you know, give it a few months maybe before we start changing things up. Okay. And then what do you do though, if the, or if the patient says, um, I'm willing to give it a few months, but I, but I just feel horrible every single day. I feel horrible. I mean, do you mm -hmm. still just sit, reinforce it say, you know, do the work along with it, keep microdosing, um, and let's, 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 you know, even though you might feel horrible, let's, let's evaluate in a couple of months, or, or is there anything else that can be done um, while they're in this stage of like, just feeling, feeling horrible? Yeah. So um, yes, I would say, but my first question, uh, you know, psychologists always answer a question with a question. So I don't mean to do that, but my, my first statement to that person would be, I'm so, you know, I'm sorry that you're feeling horrible. That's terrible. Tell me more. What do you mean? I want to know what, what feels horrible, you know? So, you know, is it that they just feel completely depressed, can't do anything, completely anxious, can't sleep, having flashbacks from traumas and no matter what they're doing, that's continuing. That's a different kind of horrible than someone who's like, you know, I have the worst migraines every single day now since I started microdosing. So my response would be different to that other person, I'd say, well, let's look at your water consumption. Let's look at your diet. Let's look at, you know, you're getting fresh air. What kinds of narrative do you have going on in your, in, in your head? Do they have any other health issues? What other medicines are they taking? What supplements, you know, and, and really try to sort of like a little bit of a detective, see what they possibly can kind of, um, you know, alter in that particular state. There are, um, you know, this is still even though we're, you and I know a decent amount about it, it's still, it's still relatively new. And what I mean mm -hmm. by that, I mean, psilocybin has been around for, you know, for, uh, for centuries and centuries, but I mean, as far as like in this day and age, uh, I see the average person out there maybe has heard of it, but doesn't, doesn't know a whole lot about it. Correct. So, so what do you do when you have a patient that comes in and, and, you know, they're, they've had trauma or that, you know, they're going through something and, and you feel that, um, the psilocybin would be a very good treatment, um, but they've never, they have no idea what it is. And, and they're, they, you know, um, how, how do you, how do you, like, how do you bring this up to your patient? Because it is, let's face it, because yeah. it is, it is schedule one and schedule it's one. Schedule one. one. Yeah. Better, so I, I would not at this juncture, I would not be able to, nor would I just sort of bring it up. Right. So when people are struggling, I mean, I'd like to, and eventually we'll be at that point. We're getting there when I can just say, so these are some of just the way I might say to someone, Hey, how's your water consumption? And would you like to try some rescue remedy and some herbal, you know, and, and now I can talk about, you know, plant-based, you know, cannabis because it is legal and we can very specifically talk about it and, and have it available to us. So because psilocybin is schedule one, I wouldn't just bring it up. Um, you know, I'm licensed and, you know, I, I follow the law. So, um, and I want to remain able to help people. So if I 
start practicing in a way that New York State doesn't like, I can be suspended. So we don't want to do that. So what I do is oftentimes people will start to naturally bring it up when I start asking them, what else are you doing? What about any plant medicines? Or you, you know, do you consume cannabis and any, any other plant medicines? People will often then say, well, is it okay to tell you about some stuff that might not be totally legal? And I say, of course, because our, our meeting is confidential and um, I'm, I'm not obligated, nor can I, and reveal any of that information outside of our um, session, you know, unless it was an extreme circumstance of somebody's life, um, you know, that someone was going to harm themselves or end their life. So, you know, they'll, they, I will sort of try to see what's there. And then sometimes people will on their own uh, bring it up. It has become more in the conversation because, you know, there's uh, Michael Pollan's work and the Netflix special, and there's been so much in the literature, New York Times, um, certainly John Hopkins, Harvard, so much, um, you know, out of Silicon Valley and, you know, here in New York, there's so much. So a lot of times people will ask me, what do you think about, you know, psilocybin? And I can get some, I have some, should I try some? And there's nothing, by the way, illegal about me talking with somebody about, their experience and what they're using. Like if someone came to me and said, hey, I use heroin. Now there's no medical value in heroin. I'm not, you know, comparing it, but I'm saying like, that's a clearly, you know, a, a, a illegal will stay illegal drug. Um, I'm legally allowed to talk to somebody about their illegal drug use. I mean, that's how people get help is by the confidential setting of being able to talk about something. So here we have obviously psilocybin. It has unbelievable medical benefits, it is not dangerous, and it's near, you know, in, in certainly in Oregon, it's legal, and here in New York, it's close. Um, so people will bring it up. I will sort of try to set the stage and see what's available. I, I will say I do look forward to um, decrim and legalization so that I can just say, here, this is what we do. This is how you can get it. Boom, done. And and we're there. We're getting there. We're, we're almost there. We're there with, you know, the concept is just a matter of it. The rest of, uh, you know, things catching up. So I'm in Utah and, you know, Utah, we're, we're, Utah is a little bit behind um, New York and Oregon and maybe Michigan, you know, but um, so what I did, um, so a little, let's say a little over a year and a half, because it's been, it's been that now um, I, I went into, I was seeing a psychiatrist and, and uh, for my anxiety and, and some depression and, um, yeah, I was on, I, I told you I was on SSRI, I was on Lexapro, I was on um, a, kind of a, a benzo uh, diazepam as needed, very low level as needed, because sometimes I just had days where I felt the um, SSRI just wasn't cutting it. I needed like, just like extra strength, if that, if that yeah. makes sense. Terrible. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it, it was. I mean, good you had that terrible that you were feeling that is what I meant. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's not, it's not, it's not a fun way to not live. Fun. It's, it's no. Not fun at all. Terrible. So, um, so one day I, you know, after reading or doing a little bit of my research and hearing about this, about psilocybin and magic mushrooms, I went into my appointment and I said, "Hey, doc, um, I've read quite a bit, or I've, you know, immersed myself kind of in this in this world, and I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking about." microdosing psilocybin and i said now he's a psychiatrist so he is able to prescribe and you know so um but of course he can't prescribe psilocybin but i did want okay. I, I did say to him what do you think i just i just kind of laid it out there said i i and i had no idea how he was going to respond I said, I said what do you think he looked at me and said i think it's a great idea and, not, and he followed oh, he, he, fo he followed with um i've got many patients that are microdosing and they're reporting really good results back to me i got the impression he wasn't super experienced in microdosing like i had to maybe share some things that i learned with him and that's okay um but um he gave me the he gave me the green light and since then i came in for appointments and reported to him how i was doing and denise there was there was one appointment that was really interesting um it was probably about um three months into my microdosing and i came into my appointment. I always carry my, um, like a little journal with me. Um, so I, I made some notes and I said, Hey doc, I, um, I want to share some things that I think I've learned about myself from microdosing. And I, I read like maybe four or five bullet points that things that I, I realized that 
um, trigger, maybe triggered trauma or you know, triggered, triggered uh, the way I feel. Um, and I, I read these off to him and he looked at me very seriously and he said, Dave, I've got to tell you something. What you have learned from microdosing psilocybin, it would have taken in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 years of talk Absolutely. therapy. He said, he said, wow. this is clearly working really, really well for you. And I felt good about it. And then a short time after that, I started weaning off my Lexapro and, and the rest is, is, is kind of history. So it's, it's a, it was yeah. a great story with me and my, and my uh, therapist as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And I'm so glad that, you know, your doctor was, even if not the most knowledgeable that he was open and that, you know, um, receptive receptive to this and supportive even if he couldn't prescribe and isn't an expert and uh that experience and it's a good point that the the change it's profound it's lasting and it is much quicker so why you know first of all there aren't enough doctors out there there's not enough good doctors psychiatrists doctors psychologists mental health to treat and and to treat well so you know that, that to have these medicines that are life-changing that are gonna heal and in a much faster, I mean, you know, people go to therapy and they could be on pharmaceuticals for their life and they like, they don't experience the change. So faster, cause we shouldn't have to suffer one more minute. And so we have this amazing plant that helps with that. And um, I'll, tell, I'll tell you like a little, little quick aside from, from, um, appointments after I started becoming like kind of knowledgeable and, and, um, and it was, and it was clearly working for me when, when I went in for appointments, he, he would ask me questions that I'm pretty perceptive. I, I really felt he was trying to get some information from me because it seemed to me that he was interested in using psilocybin, but maybe he didn't know, you know, enough. So he was, he was kind of asking me some things and I, I think they were for his own, for his knowledge. That's, that's what yeah. I felt. That's great. You know, we, we, we learn a lot from the patients, right? You know, um, there's no sure. doubt. I will hear a patient will bring up something and I'll be like, what was that? Tell me that I'm going to write it down. So I don't have to just be the expert who knows everything. I'd never get anywhere. So we learn. So I'm so glad that, you know, that opened up his experience and potential for maybe his own healing or, you know, those of, of others. That's great. Right. I'm so right. glad that it helped you and, and just so profoundly. That's just amazing. It's been fantastic. And, and in the few minutes we have left, Denise, let's, um, I, I, you've mentioned, you mentioned um, cannabis a few times on, in this episode. And I, I want to just um, get a feel from you, how you think um, cannabis and even um, as far as, how does, do you think it works well together with microdosing? Because I, I'll tell you, the reason I'm asking the question is because I found um, now I've been, I've been using, I mean, I, I'm fairly experienced with cannabis. I mean, I don't know if I'm like, like to brag about this, but, been, but I, I was, I started using cannabis like a little bit when I was like probably um, 16 at summer camp. If only my right. parents, if only That's my parents knew that. If That's only the my, typical. <laughs> if, only, if only my parents knew that. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I think I told them also, but, but um, so more recently, I feel that there's some type of, um, really good um what's the word i'm looking for not it wouldn't be um it wouldn't be like a no symbiotic effect is not the right word it's not the right word but um an effect that um when you use both of them they each kind of help each other out if i, I don't know yeah. the right word for that but uh, uh not like a not, synergistic 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 is exactly that's the, the right word, word? that's, that's yeah. exactly the word i wanted yes yes okay. exactly yeah one, symb symbiotic one, was totally the wrong word <laughs> yeah symbiotic is another thing so but one potentiates the effect they go well together yes for, for some people yeah so yes that's absolutely the case for people that th they can work well together you know what um, i noticed I mean, and, I, and, and you yeah. say that you you've you, you know you use some cannabis too um i've yeah. noticed ever since i started microdosing and if I use cannabis either on the same day or even a day later, a day or two later, I've found, and I'd, I'd love to know whether you've seen this also, the cannabis, now I only use edible cannabis because I don't, I don't like smoke. My lungs are very valuable to me and I don't like inhaling mm -hmm. smoke or even vape. I just don't, I don't think it's good for the lungs. So I don't, I, so edible is, is a really good way to, um, to get that into your body. But um, I noticed though that the, the um, cannabis when, when I use cannabis, 
it seems to act more like a psychedelic. And yeah. I know this is true because, like I said, I've, I've experienced using cannabis with, before psilocybin for, for decades. So, so it's, not, it's not something I'm making up. It's not a coincidence. It clearly, the cannabis clearly feels very different to me. And I, get, I, I oftentimes get closed eye visuals with cannabis and it, it's, it feels more like a trip to me. So yeah. do, have you noticed that as well? Yeah. So from my personal experience, because I haven't done cannabis while I've been microdosing, mm -hmm. because cannabis never really worked for me all that much. Although I must say during the early days of the pandemic, I, I, I was able to get a prescription because none of the other services I would use for my back pain were available. And a friend of mine said, why don't you? And I said, oh, I never. She's no, no, you get the right dose and the doctor prescribed the right dose of THC to you know the CBD. And it absolutely helped my back. It absolutely did. I didn't continue it. So I can't say from personal experience that, you know, while microdosing, it, it, it's actually, you're making me think this is probably a good thing to try now is to see how, you know, using a little bit of cannabis, if it's different now that I have done so much rewiring in my body and my, you know, mental uh, state. Uh, but I have, so I, I know anecdotal and I know what I've, you know, read, which is, I mean, technically cannabis is, considered a hallucinogen, you know, hallucinogenic drug, technically. technically, even though most people don't trip per se on cannabis, you sort of can. Um, I certainly did when I was a little bit younger than you, actually, the first time I smoked, <laughs> it's a little like, I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. And all of a sudden I was like, people were walking, but there were 10 of them. So I was absolutely experiencing that time trip kind of trail. And it was, just cannabis. So it, it is technically hallucinogenic. So the fact that there would be a one potentiating the other, when you shift the way serotonin is in your body, when you shift the wiring and how things are physically and mentally structured in your body, anything you then experience, consume, potentially could feel different than before you did some of that rewiring. You know, like, so somebody like says they, they recover a little, they get a little healthier, they get out in the fresh air more, maybe their allergies are not as bad because they've been taking better care of themselves and they don't do as poorly when they're around some dust or, you know, when whatever is up in the air. So I, I do believe that, that we don't know a lot, as you said, but I'm absolutely hearing that that's the case, that the, the two do help each other. And that that's a really good um, combination. Very interesting. And, and um, you mentioned CBD also. And, and I know um, years ago, se several years back, I um, was trying to use some CBD for my anxiety way before I was on any kind of pharmaceutical or even you know way before microdosing psilocybin. So when I first started using CBD for anxiety, it seemed to work really well. And I mean, maybe the first few months but then it started not really working as well but so I kind of like put it to the side and maybe once in a while tried it but it, I didn't really it was and if anything it might have been a placebo later on because it just didn't seem to do much at all for me however yes. however when I started microdosing I re um, visited CBD and wow there is no question in my mind um, that, and I, I don't know if it has something to do with the receptors, the uh, cannabinoid receptor. I don't know exactly, but there's no question in my mind, the CBD started working really well as far as like making me feel like, like really, really calm. And, just, and sometimes it was having, you know, maybe it, you know, especially early on a little bit of a difficult day, the CBD worked really well in conjunction with the, um, with the, with the microdosing of psilocybin, which I was That's really true. happy to see. Yeah. That's true. That's true. You know, I think about, I'm so glad, and, and you're making me again think, well, I'm going to reintroduce the CBD, all that stuff that I was using, because I feel like now that I have had such a benefit from microdosing, like I've sort of put some of those things to side, but I'm thinking now, well, maybe I'll take a little CBD and maybe it'll really be helpful, because I too experienced where it was helpful, and then it sort of seemed to like not, you know, kind of wane in its effectiveness. And I'm thinking just spontaneously based on our conversation, you know, when you open up and you've changed your mindset and your, you know, the way you're wired physically as well as psychologically. So now you're open. So 
taking some of these synergistic kinds of, um, you know, having some CBD or some cannabis because you're in maybe a different place because the, uh, the psilocybin, the mushrooms kind of really open things up. So maybe you're like, it's going to sort of, it, you're going to consume it a little differently in terms of the physiology and the, you know, psychology of it, perhaps, I don't know. I look forward to, to hearing more about that actually in anecdotes and, you know, 30 years from now, the research will maybe show some of that. <laughs> well, even more importantly, I, I, I'd be very curious if you, if you tried to get uh, to use a little CBD these days or, or, and or cannabis, um, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear what you think as far as if, you, if you're experiencing the same thing that I experienced. It clearly, yes. um, the, the psilocybin absolutely helps the cannabis or your CBD um, do its thing. So um, yeah. I'd, love to, I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear if you. If well, you I'm, I'm absolutely going to be doing taking some CBD later. So I'll be happy. I'll be. I'll get right back to you and let you know. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> um, Denise, um, this has been great. The time has really gone by pretty quickly. But um, before we do end of this, um, any any final thoughts, especially for maybe somebody that's um, watching or listening to this, however they get it. Um, they're not, you know, they're kind of going through, they've had some trauma, they, they experiencing some of the issues that we've talked about, um, but they're not, they don't really know a whole lot about microdosing yet. They're not sure that, you know, they might be a little bit afraid because afraid of a bad trip or whatever, and they've never used anything like that. Um, what do you say to somebody like that, that um, is interested on the verge, but maybe just hasn't, hasn't um, put their toes in the water yet? Yeah. Great question. So um, what I usually tell them is to go listen to your, um, you know, videos, <laughs> especially the like absolute beginner's guide to microdosing, because you address that. Um, and, and, you know, we, we didn't have this conversation before. So it's like, if somebody watching this, going, what are they just like reinforcing each other? But it occurs to me that because I don't have a video like that, and I, it's much more efficient for them to go watch, you know, a video such as yours that really addresses that you know, about what might be concerning. I, I, I certainly let people know that there's absolutely safe. There's absolutely no danger. Um, you can't have like a bad, exp you know, you're not going to like harm yourself. There's no danger. You're not going to, especially with microdosing, you'll either just feel a little energized and good, or you might feel nothing, but it's absolutely safe. And, and I always validate, of course, the um, apprehension makes sense you know, I experienced that myself. So anything that will help them, you know, I, I try to point them in the direction. I'm, I'm in a couple of little Facebook groups where there's some really great access. Some, an, another, the other one that you and I are both in on Facebook, you know, she just published, she put the books in there, all the files, all the research. So it can be without being too overwhelming, just kind of click around in some of that. And then, you know, come back to me and let's talk about it. Let's have, you know, a conversation about it. There's so much information. Um, I will caution people, there's also a lot of bad information. So if there's something that we have said today or something different than what, you know, uh, a video that you've uh, put out, um, it, it's probably because the person has the wrong information. The scamming is um, pretty intense out there. People, you know, say, oh, I'll help you. And then they're just trying to sell you something and then you pay and you never get anything or it's not really the substance. Um, so you have, you have yeah. to know your way around a little. So just keep checking with people you trust. And I want to just point out, like I always do in, in my episodes, um, this is not to be taken as medical advice. This is my personal experience. It's um, uh, Denise's personal experience, even though you're, you are a psychologist, a doctor of psychology. Um, I'm just mm -hmm. a retired, I'm a doctor, but I'm just a, I'm only a retired dentist. So we're only a dentist. <laughs> 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 I, you know, it's, I, I, I don't want to downplay dentistry because I'm, I'm kidding about that because dentist, it's a dentistry is a well-respected profession. I practiced Absolutely. dentistry for, for many years. However, yeah. um, and dentists have to be, we have to be kind of like mini psychologists sometimes, you know, when a patient would come, would come in and, and tell me about problems, you know, we have, we have to talk to them sometimes. So, but, um, but you are a true doctor of psychology. So, um, but, but again, this is not to be taken as official medical advice. We're both giving our, our kind of personal experiences in this. And um, did, before we sign off, any, any last, um, any final, final thoughts, final words at all? And you don't um, have to, you don't have, if you don't have anything. If we, just, I just keep thinking about trusting, um, trusting ourselves, trusting what we do, trust our pathway. Even if we don't really, I just always say, I find my way as long as I'm breathing. 
and uh, and I'm going to trust the paths and the things that I'm trying. So if somebody decides they want to try microdosing, that it is helpful to you know take that moment, especially before dose day, and say you know I'm going to trust this. I'm going to trust this path, and it, it, I'll find my way with this. This, this trust is probably a, a good um, word to keep in mind. That's good. And and, and remember, um, anybody watching or listening, it's it's a microdose. Um, you're not going to go on a psychedelic trip, you know, unless you take the wrong amount. Because and, and so many people yeah. um, ask the question, well, like, I'm, I'm really concerned. I want to make sure I'm doing it at the right time. Well, yeah, that's fine. But but again, it's it's safe. It's it's a it's a tenth or less of of a, of a dose that somebody would take to um, you know as a psychedelic dose. So it's a very very tiny microdose. It's not going to it's not going to cause you problems. So, so don't, don't be afraid of it, please. Well, Denise, um, I really appreciate you being here. This is, I mean, the time went super fast. We, I think okay. we could talk, we could, we could talk for hours more. So that's my, that's what I want to say to you is, would you come back sometime? We can have another conversation, okay. maybe touch on another topic Absolutely. related to Absolutely. this. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. I just, you know, I, I appreciate your time. Well, and I, I, I appreciate you also taking your time to be the um, moderator in, in the Facebook group. It's called Microdose U. Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure I leave links to everything we've talked about in the yeah, show right. notes here. There'll all be links. But um, thanks thanks for your time. You're busy, but you take the time to, you know, uh, as moderator to uh, let people in and to, to answer questions and, and give support. So um, I, I yeah. really, really appreciate that, Denise. Thanks. You're so welcome. Much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for your time. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll see you soon. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Take care, Dave. Bye.